Welcome. I'm David Batnelli, the Dean of the Donald and Barbara Zucker School of Medicine at Hofstra Northwell, and I'm here with the leadership of Hofstra University, Northwell Health, our faculty, and we welcome you to our 12th White Coat Ceremony. In previous years, when introducing this ceremony, we often referred to ourselves as a new medical school. But that seemed to aggravate too many people because we were no longer very new. And as I said, we already mentioned this is our 12th white coat ceremony. So now we simply refer to ourselves as the leading medical school of this millennium. You'll hear much more regarding the ceremony and its significance from our faculty, but first I'd like to introduce a few people and recognize some of whom have been able to join us today. First and foremost, welcome to all those who are here to support our students, friends, family, faculty, and staff, here all to celebrate with you this special event. Please give yourselves a round of applause. <laughs> Importantly, our benefactors, Donald and Barbara Zucker, whose enormous generous gift not only named this medical school, but provides the majority of the scholarship support in, all, in order to be able to provide those who need. The entirement of their gift is used as this endowment, and we are eternally grateful. We're also joined by our president of Hofstra University, Susan Poser. who you will hear from later during the program, and importantly, our founding Dean Emeritus, Dr. Lawrence Smith. <laughs> Michael Dowling, the President and CEO of Northwell Health, is in Ireland, can't be here with us today, and sends his congratulations as well. Also on stage are the leadership of our school, and you may notice everyone wearing white coats, even those who are non-clinical. And importantly, this is a show of support for celebrating, preserving, and growing humanism in medicine. I also want to mention two important faculty members, Drs. Carmen Rodriguez and Taranjit Ahuja, who will be coding our students. <laughs> Taranjit is a pediatrician and the director of our humanism and medicine curriculum and a strong supporter of the Gold Foundation. And Carmen is an obstetrician and our faculty advisor of our Gold Humanism chapter here at the Zucker School. Both are outstanding role models and we are privileged to have them agree to code our students. <laughs> and while I cannot introduce everyone, I do have an additional person I want to recognize and that is Chief Paul Wilders of the Nassau County Fire Academy. Paul, please stand. where our students completed their disaster training this past month, and I would like to publicly thank him and his entire staff and their leaders for their support and contribution to our curriculum and the education of our future physicians. So without further delay, thank you to all the friends and family and others who are here to support and celebrate our students, and let me turn this program over to our Associate Dean for Professionalism and Doctoring Skills, Dr. Ellen Perlman, who will speak about the Gold Foundation, the white coat ceremony, and why our ceremony takes place at this time on our students' journey to their careers in medicine. Thank you, Ellen. So, uh, as Dr. Batnelli said, I'm Dr. Ellen Perlman, um, and it is with deep gratitude and humility uh, that I speak to you on this auspicious day. During this rite of passage, when you are initiated into this community and truly start on your path to physicianhood. Today, you accept the mantle of the white coat, surrounded by your peers, supported by all of your loved ones, and guided by your mentors. Before all these witnesses, you accept the calling of your profession. You will leave here forever changed 
No longer can you leave what you do at the door, for what you do will forever be a part of who you are. And what you do and who you are represent and reflect not just you as an individual, but this whole community. And it is thus very fitting that the pin that you will wear bears the symbol of the Mobius strip, a symbol of unity and non-duality, for you will be one with the profession. It is a symbol of infinity, for you have chosen a path that never ends. <laughs> Don't worry, training does eventually end, um, but the calling never ends. These pins, generously donated by the Arthur P. Gold Foundation, will serve as a reminder to you to keep healthcare human by treasuring the critical bond between the clinician and patient and appreciating that compassion and empathy must be the hallmark of your clinical practice. It is also fitting that this mantle that you are about to wear, the short white coat, allows everyone to identify you as part of the physician hood but also as someone who is newly initiated, not fully endowed with the responsibilities of a physician. That will happen four years from now when you graduate and receive a long white coat. Yes, the length of a physician's white coat increases with seniority and experience. So this tra tradition was started by Professor Gold. He was a pediatric neurologist and professor at the Columbia University College of Physicians and Surgeons, and the first ceremony was in 1993. He realized that it was important to mark this rite of passage at the beginning of medical school, that the oath that you will recite on graduation from medical school should be known to you now, at the beginning, so that you can better understand the transformative journey you are about to embark on. And the importance of marking this rite of passage with a ceremony is now recognized by 99% of accredited medical schools in the United States, 14 international schools, and has been adopted by over 450 nursing and dental schools, as well as physician assistant programs. And we are truly indebted to the Gold Foundation for their continual support of um, our school. And we are so blessed to have two esteemed representatives of the Gold Foundation with us today. I would love it if you would stand. Uh, the first is Dr. Richard Levin, the president and CEO of the Gold Foundation. <laughs> and Elizabeth Cleek, senior vice president and chief operating officer of the Gold Foundation. Thank you. So without further ado, I would like to leave you with the words of Clarissa Pincola Estes. Ours is not the task of fixing the entire world all at once, but of stretching out to mend the part of the world that is within our reach. Any small, calm thing that one soul can do to help another soul, to assist some portion of this poor, suffering world, will help immensely. It is not given to us to know which acts or by whom will cause the critical mass to tip toward an enduring good. What is needed for dramatic change is an accumulation of acts, adding, adding to, adding more, continuing. We know that it does not take everyone on earth to bring justice and peace, but only a small, determined group who will not give up during the first, second, or hundredth gale. One of the most calming and powerful actions you can do to intervene in a stormy world is to stand up and show your soul. Soul on deck shines like gold in dark times. To display the lantern of soul in these shadowy times, to be fierce and to show mercy towards others, both are acts of immense bravery and greatest necessity. Struggling souls catch light from other souls who are fully lit and willing to show it. And in that spirit, I hope you will write this on your wall. When a great ship is in harbor and moored, it is safe. There can be no doubt. But that is not what great ships are built for. Thank you.
So it is now my honor to turn the podium over to the president of Hofstra University, Susan Poser, who will say a few words. Good afternoon and welcome to the white coat ceremony of the Donald and Barbara Zucker School of Medicine at Hofstra Northwell. Today, the medical profession welcomes you into the noble community of service and I am honored to participate in this momentous day and to be one of the first to congratulate you and your families and wish you all well on this next big step in your journey. Now, as you heard, um, I have donned the white coat today myself at uh, Dr. Battinelli's insistence, even though I am not a health care provider. The dean said that this coat symbolizes the humanism in medicine. In, in my case, it's really a symbol of medicine on a humanist. But either way, we can all agree about the importance of humanism in medicine, in education, and in living a good life. Today, you receive your white coat as a reminder that healthcare is all about people and people in need. In a few moments, you will pledge to keep healthcare human and to care for your patients with dignity, compassion, empathy, and respect. As you take that oath, may you be encouraged and reassured by all who surround you today, as well as those who could not be here in person, that you will be very well supported in this journey. Along with your family members and friends and mentors and peers, the entire community at Hofstra University, at the Donald and Barbara Zucker School of Medicine, and at Northwell Health are here to support you throughout this passage to becoming physicians. So on behalf of Hofstra University, I congratulate you on your transition to physicians in training, and I look forward to following your progress and seeing you all on campus in the coming years. Thank you. Okay, we're getting closer. I'd like to ask now Dr. Rona Waldenberg, the Associate Dean for Admissions, to come up and she will announce each of the students before they're coded. Good afternoon, everyone. Honored guests, faculty, students, family, friends. Welcome to the beginning of the journey into the world of medicine for the entering class of 2022. A few facts before we start. There are 95 students uh, who will be in our MD program, four in our MD-PhD physician scientist program, and two students who have completed dental school and in the next six years will get a medical degree and will complete their oromaxillofacial residency at Northwell Health. There are 50 undergraduate colleges and universities represented in these 101 students. 12 of them are the first in their families to go to college and now obviously here in medical school. 10 are from the great state of California. Hey, yay. Our youngest student in the class is 21 and the oldest is 41. Wow. So at this time, it is both my honor and privilege to introduce them to you. Samantha Alpstein. John, John Alvarez. Sarika Aurora. <laughs> Temi Tepe Ayodele. <laughs> Crystal Balvuena. <laughs> Ms. 
Bianca Barreto. Jared Bassman. Elena, Elena Baruti. Jessica Baldick. Alexandra Bubur. Madeline Bright. Lindsay Bungert. Evan Cater. Adrian Chen. Julie Chen. Maya Chopra. Lamorna Coyle. Sophia Curry. Francesca Diaz. Nora Donahue. Kimberly Dong. Francesca Dorwart. Morgan Dressel. Timothy, sorry, Timothy Foster. Joseph Galizia. George Gaffari. Joshua Goodman. Alyssa Grayson. Akiva Grimaldi. John Habert. Yusa Hassan. <laughs> Marvin Ho. <laughs> Catherine Kuchkarov. Suara Calva. Theodorus Kara Nicholas. Dahlia Kaufman.
Jacob Cosme. Caroline Kelly. Lily Kolb. Rushil Kumpani. Ivy Lamb. Madeline Lane. Simon Lee. <laughs> That's okay. You know, it's the alphabet, it's a little tough, you know. You, we, <laughs> Simon Lee. <laughs> Nicholas Leung. Yeah. Brian Lee. Yeah. Felicia Lee. Yeah. Zehong Jerry Lee. Lily Ren Lu. <laughs> Stephanie Ma. <laughs> Brian Maney. Joseph Maselli. Ariana Mastrogianis. Liam McDevitt. Liam McGurk. <laughs> Sam Miodovnik. <laughs> William Mueller. Dasha must have, must, oh, sorry. <laughs> Dasha, I'm sorry. Dasha Masatova. <laughs> Kenneth Nayumba. <laughs> Kathy Wynn. Javanka Noel. <laughs> Ivie Odia.
Oluwatosin Omalabu. Evan Osofsky. Gabriella Palma. Gishan Patel. Ved Patel. <laughs> Isabel Pelcher. <laughs> Nefes Porzada. Dorian Poussant. <laughs> Alexandra Kiliri. <laughs> Matthew Rohde. Emma Sart. <laughs> Stephanie Sabido. <laughs> Peru Saad. Walkania Santos. <laughs> Alexander Schemmer. <laughs> Jacob Schneider. Amanda Shore. Jonathan Scaglioni. Manav Shah. Ria Shah. Adam Sharon. Alex Silberswag. Jacob Stone. <laughs> Hannah Sturm. <laughs> Saman Suleiman. Pavit Suri. Jasmine Z. Aditya Dadanki.
Xavier Chujin. Julia Tatro. Christelle Thermidor. Leona Tomey. Nanden Vithwani. Tishaya Ward. <laughs> Madeline Weiner. Trevor Weiss. Allison Winter. Kassin Desmond Yo. Gina Yam. And last but not least, I can relate, I was Waldenberg, so I know, okay? <laughs> Sophia Zacharyson. Thank you, sir. So before we conclude with a final round of applause for our students, I just want to again remark on why we perform this service at this time. Many schools do this at the beginning, maybe in the first week or so. We choose at the completion of their EMT training, which really marks their full transition into the clinical world. And today they've received their pins along with their gold humanism pins from Dr. Smith and President Poser. But we are very, very grateful again to Chief Paul Wilders to be here, and we'll ask him to come to the stage. It's always good to have a little surprise in there somewhere. Please, a, a round of applause for our students and the chief. So now I'd like to ask all the students and all the physicians on the stage and in the room to please rise.
And please, please recite along with me the Hippocratic Oath. I swear to fulfill to the best of my ability and judgment this covenant. I will respect the hard-won scientific gains of those physicians in whose steps I walk and gladly share such knowledge as is mine with those who are to follow. I will apply for the benefit of the sick all measures that are required, avoiding those twin traps of overtreatment and therapeutic nihilism. I will remember that there is an art to medicine as well as science, and that warmth, sympathy, and understanding may outweigh the surgeon's knife or the chemist's drug. I will not be ashamed to say I know not, nor will I fail to call in my colleagues when the skills of another are needed for a patient's recovery. I will respect the privacy of my patients, for their problems are not disclosed to me that the world may know. Most especially must I tread with care in matters of life and death, and never abuse the power that has been bestowed upon me. I will remember that I do not treat a fever chart, a cancerous growth, but a sick human being whose illness may affect not only the person, but a family and community. I will prevent disease whenever I can, for prevention is preferable to cure. I will remember that I remain a member of society with special obligations to all my fellow human beings, though sound of mind and body, as well as the infirm. I will maintain the health of my own mind, body, and spirit, so I am able to discharge my duties appropriately. If I do not violate this oath, may I enjoy life and art, respected while I live and remembered with infection thereafter. May I always act so as to preserve the finest traditions of my calling, and may I long experience the joy of healing those who seek my help. Congratulations on the beginnings of this journey, and I invite everyone to the medical school for a reception, refreshments, and one last thing, I just ask that everybody stay seated until the students have left the auditorium. Congratulations.